This street preacher's at a pride rally and has met with some very interesting objections from this lady. Let's see what she has to say. You read this, these books that are written though by men, they have no connection to God. So when you see that, oh, you're going to go to hell for like sodomy and everything else, but you're basing it all in a book that men, men, white, rich, cis men have wrote. The Bible wasn't written by white men. <laughs> it was written by Hebrews. Yeah, we're, we're actually brown skinned men. They're actually, they're actually my color. So the, the, the Bible that I'm preaching is not a white, it's not a white supremacist book. And in the Bible it actually says, it says, it says, if a man steals a man and he, and he be found in his possession, that man should be put to death. So the Bible actually condemns slavery the way that we understand it. Like the elastic slave trade, if you, uh, the Bible says if you steal a man and you sell him, that man should be put to death. Now, let me, and, and I think that we all have kind of like a, a similar, the Bible says we all know God, but we suppress the truth and the righteousness because we all ask this one question. Where do we come from? That's a godly question. That's a cosmic question. And there's only there's only a few answers to that, right? We ra we rather evolve, or there's a, a great creator that loves us and intimately put us together and, and wants us to know him, wants us to have a relationship with him. And uh, to that lady, I don't know if she lived, but I'm sorry that Christians misrepresented, uh, or that my community misrepresented um, um, the Chris Christianity and, and it pushed her away. But at the end of the day, God wants a relationship with you. And that's why I'm out here. Um, I was, I had like a terrible life, and, and this is how I found peace. So, and, th and, and the Bible says that Jesus Christ is good news. So I want to give others the peace that, that God has given me. Now you can accept that peace, or you can reject that peace, but it's up to you. But at least if I have this good news, it's incumbent upon me at least to try to share it. I'm not forcing it on anybody. God, just, that's why I said God loves everyone, and that's just true. But, but, um, but to love God, you have to know him. Because you can't love someone you don't know. I love that this lady went from yelling at this preacher to just humbly and attentively listening to everything that he has to say. Her attitude just completely did a 180. And she almost, you can tell, she almost senses something different in the air about this guy and is really listening to what he's saying. And I, I think that's the spirit of God moving in her heart. But not everyone at this rally is as respect to, respectful as her. And so you're about to see some pretty heated objections and antagonizing opponents. So let's see how he handles that. I just kind of wanted to say, like, it's you're not going to change anyone's mind here. And no one's going to change your mind here. And I feel like you're just... I, the feedback is bad. Um, no, I just wanted to say, like... As much as you say that, like, you're not trying to change anyone's mind, you're not trying to make anyone convert, but just being out here and, like, trying to engage with people that, like, you know are going to react to what you're doing, it just seems very pointless, and it just sort of seems like you kind of just want to stand here and, like, listen to your own voice. I'm sure that... But I'm listening to you right now. I appreciate and that. I no, and I do appreciate that, but it's like... You... And, and am I not speaking to you, you respectfully? You are. You are speaking to us respectfully, but I do feel like you are coming here trying to like listen to people but you have a script in the back of your head for every single kind of response that comes to you and it's just going to create it's going to create more of a it's going to just create more of a divide between us why do you believe that because think of all the people that have come up to you just now and have tried to debate you we shouldn't be fucking like debating each other why not that's how we come to the truth. If, 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 if we reason together, right, and the truth, and you, no, I'm just, if we reason together and the truth uh, resides on this side, and we have a conversation, and you say something where I'm like, oh my gosh, that's so true, that, that my opinion changes. Matter of fact, we got, we, uh, our, the human condition, um, we, we got all our knowledge, like science, from, from hypothesis, from people debating, from people um, having two, two different points of view into the truth, ro rolls to the top. I'm gonna say one more thing and I'm done because I don't have anything else to say that you can like rebut to. But your first mistake is thinking that there is one truth in the world, and that's basically just that. The fact that you just think that there is one truth and the only one truth is the first flaw of your logic. Give me an example of two truths. Okay, so uh, if you if you're clapping, but if you if you look in the dictionary, the word truth is the antithesis of a lie. So the, the truth is ab the truth is absence of a lie. So that means there, there, it can only be one thing. The truth is, has to be absolute according to the dictionary. So if it's not the truth, that means it's, it's, it's I mean, if it's not a lie, it's the truth. And if it's not the truth, it's a lie. There are not multiple truths. Can you give me an example of two things that could be true? If that if, if what you're saying is true, give me two examples of two things of two things that could be true. You are here to manipulate people, and that's all you're doing. Thank you. Yeah. Well, the, huh? Okay, help yourself, help yourself. The Bible says this. The Bible says, I can't really convince anybody of anything. The Bible says, one man plants a seed. He discriminates me on the Eton Center. Tell me when I was walking, 
when I was walking there, he told me, he's an old man, he tries to stop me. You... That wasn't me. You, yeah. You that wasn't me. I think you got me confused with David. That wasn't me, because I've never seen you before in my life. You play the holier than thou. That's not true. I have a question. That's not true. If I, if I, if I felt like I was holier than now, I would say, I would, I would be up here and I wouldn't even in, engage with you guys. I wouldn't even talk to you. If I don't, I don't think I'm any better than you. I think that, I think that Christ is better than all of us and he's the, and he's the way, the truth, and the life. And the Bible Amen. says, I believe in every, just, just, just hear me out. If everyone lived like God, everyone lived like Christ, this would be a better place. Christ says, turn the other cheek. He says, love your enemies. He says, pray for those who persecute you. And he says, uh, treat others how you wish to be treated. Amen. If everyone actually lived like that, we wouldn't even have war. We would have none of, none of these things that's going on in the world. Sorry, I just want to say that there's, um, with the Bible, there's actually no proof that anyone who was an actual apostle wrote it. It was people that just submitted stories. There's provenly hundreds of them, and a select group of people selected the best ones, assembled a book out of it to, to do their rhetoric from their time, and there's proof that there are hundreds of mistranslations through the Bible that are directly related to the things that you're preaching. Who taught you that? Are you saying Paul wasn't a real person? Historical Paul, Apostle Paul, are you saying Jesus, there's not extra biblical uh, accounts of Jesus as being a real person? Or James, or Peter, these are all real people. Now, now, now. Yeah, but their stories are not proven, and there are hundreds of people that submitted stories. What's your standard of proof? It's my standard of proof? Because that's, that's just your opinion. You, by, you, you can make a claim and say, oh, you know, it hasn't been proven, but give me your standard of proof. What do you mean by proof? As in there's no confirmation that these stories happen, no witnesses. Confirmation from what? From who? Witnesses, as in, you know, how law works. No, so I, I don't think you understand the, the gospel. The gospel says that when Jesus rose, rose there was actually 500 witnesses. And there's 12 witnesses, and, one, yeah. and those 12 witnesses wrote, wrote the Bible. Those, one of the 12, uh, the 12, some of the 12 witnesses actually wrote the Bible that we have. The thing is, this, this, this is where, you, this is where you, uh, you're in error. Do you believe in George Washington? Yeah. Why? Because there were actual witnesses. Name me, name one person who witnessed George Washington. Pictures and there's, there's pictures of Jesus, there's pictures of apostles. Name one person that name one person that you know that, that that you know that you trust to tell me that George Washington existed. I think you're an idiot. Okay, cool. You know, I, yeah, you know, you know, uh, when you start doing ad hominem attacks, you, uh, you realize that what you're saying is foolishness. There's, there's nothing, there's nothing, that, there's nothing that we have learned without written or spoken word. So the thing is, the Bible is a record. It's a record of God. It's a record of history. It's a record of how things were, were created. Just like we have records of, of George Washington. Just like we have records of um, of all these historical figures. Uh, the Bible is a, is a historical record of Jesus. So, do you go home after these things and just talk to yourself in a mirror for hours? Because you seem to like the sound of your voice, like quite a bit, actually. A genuine. I like the sound of your voice too. That's why I give you one on the mic. <laughs> That's kind of gay. Thank you. God bless you. For real? Honestly, I just feel like you really need to get laid. So. Pardon me? I just feel like you really need to get laid. I'm sorry. <laughs> I mean, and, and you, you're actually going back to my point. All you guys care about is sex. Thank you. Thank you. All you guys care about is sex and lust. Um, life is more important than about just getting laid. I'm actually, I'm actually going to wear this. Life is more important than, than getting laid. Life is more important than sex. Um, um, I, 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 have a, I, have, I have a pastor that worked at a cancer ward. And, um, and, when, and when, the, when the cancer people were on their deathbed, we used to ask them, you know, what kind of do you have any regrets and if you could do anything over and what they said most of the time is they wish that, that they made better decisions and they wish they spent more time with their family N uh, none of the person none of the people that were dying ever said uh, they wish that they had more sex whether you're religious or not you really got a hand to this man door love for just doing an excellent job staying calm collected respectful even when faced with antagonizing opposition that's really just trying to get a reaction out of him and especially near the end there he's just spitting some facts that's <laughs> Door, I don't know, you're, you're probably not watching this, but props to you, man. We need more people like you out there, and I highly recommend anybody watching this checks out his channel. It's called Ministry of the Word. I'll link it down in the description. And street preaching, it really gets a bad rep, but I feel like it's almost a lot lost art in today's world. I think there's something very beautiful about people being able to come together and have a public discourse about some of the hardest questions in life, like who are we, where do we come from, is there a God, just answering important questions like that. And the last thing Doors said there really stuck with me when he was talking about 
cancer patients on their deathbed and they're not regretting not having enough sex. They're regretting not spending enough time with their family or their friends or just their life choices. And there's a verse in the Bible that says, be careful then how you live, not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. And when I think about that, I think about the fact that it's so easy for us to get caught up in just our day-to-day distractions and to miss out on getting what we really wanted to done. And I'm guilty of this myself. I mean, some days I have this whole plan, but I throw it out the window just playing video games or watching YouTube, getting distracted when I could have spent it with family and friends or done any sort of life-fulfilling activities. And so... I want to leave you with this question, which is, is there anything in your life right now that you feel like is distracting you or taking you away from what's important? Think about that. Have a good day.